Let's pray just a moment. Father, again we come in the precious name of Jesus to thank and praise thee for your love and mercy. Again, Lord, I come asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, some sermons are inspirational and others are instructional. And I feel like this one tonight will be instructional. And I trust it'll help us. Book of First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and the twenty-third verse. First Thessalonians five twenty-three. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. That's W-H-O-L-L-Y. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. I want you to notice what Paul says here. I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body. Why did he say it that way? Now, that isn't the way I would have said it. I would have said body, soul, and spirit. Paul didn't say it that way. He said spirit, soul, and body. He put the spirit first. He put the body last. Now, to Paul, the spirit comes first, and the body comes last. And But so many times to us, uh, the body comes first, and the spirit comes last. And actually, when we talk about the Spirit, it doesn't really mean much to us because we're just not quite sure what it is. We can't see it, we can't feel it, and we talk about it, and, uh, but it really doesn't mean much to us. The body and soul, as a matter of fact, the atheist, uh, he doesn't even think we have a spirit at all, and so he just thinks in terms entirely of body and soul. But Paul here has it right because we, we are spirit. See, uh, the, real, the real you is spiritual, is spirit. The real you is spirit. It's not your body. That's not the real you. The real you uh, is spirit. See, God is a spirit. He's a person. But that's why many times God doesn't mean too much for us because we, we can't put a body with him. And, uh, but he's a real person. The spirit is a person. Your, your spirit, is, a, your spirit is, is you. The person. Now, as uh, some, some doctor, I think it was, who said that the memory is in the spirit. And uh, we have reference to that, if you don't believe that. Of course, there's the rich man and Lazarus. Uh, the rich man was in hell, and Lazarus was in heaven. I mean, yeah, Lazarus was in heaven. Uh, the rich man wanted a drop of water to cool his tongue. He didn't want a drop of water from Jacob's well. His tongue was decaying in the grave. The real, the real tongue, and George Watson brings it out so clearly, that our spiritual being is the real person, and that spiritual being has eyes to see, ears to hear, a tongue to talk and to feel, and everything about us uh, is the real person, is the spirit. So the rich, the rich man in hell, he wanted a drop of the living water. See, that's what he was thirsty for. A, d a drop from, of water from Jacob's well would never have satisfied the thirst of the tongue of the Spirit. No, no. 
So the rich man, you see, in hell, he, the real person, the real person was in hell. His body was lying decaying in a grave, but the real person was in hell. And the real person of Lazarus was in heaven. The real person was in heaven. It wasn't something that his spirit floated off in something intangible. The real person was there. That's the real person. So when we get to heaven, it's going to, it's going to be you and me. We, uh, we, if we get to heaven, all of us get there, it's going to be you and me. We're not going to change. The real person is going to be there. We're not going to jump out of this piece of clay and float around in something kind of a, a mystical fog. That's not it. Look at Paul. When he went to heaven, he said he had this experience of, of going to heaven, and he said, whether I was in the body or out of the body, he said, I really couldn't tell. He, the real person was there, and he didn't know if he had his body along with him or not. The body didn't mean anything. It's just the house we live in. So Paul said, I, I, that's where I was. And he said, Did, I don't know whether I had my body with me or not. Because it didn't make any difference. The body isn't. And yet it's amazing how the devil tricks us to live so much for our bodies. When they're really not as important as we think. Now, I know we've got to live in them. God's given them to us. And I, I don't want to discount that. It's important that we take care of it and so forth and so on. But the real person. Is, is the spiritual part of us. And so Paul has it right. Your spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. So the real person is the spirit within us. The spirit is not something intangible. The body is purely physical, but uh, the, the spiritual part of us is the real person. Now, the, the body talks of the spirit, the body, soul, and mind, or body, soul, and spirit, uh, the, the mind now is the organ through which the spirit contacts the earth. Our inner being, the spirit. So if a person is knocked unconscious, you haven't knocked his spirit unconscious. He's as much alive and conscious with the spiritual realm. All you've got done is you knocked him out of contact with this earth. But you have never knocked him unconscious. God can talk with a, with a dead man or he can talk with a body, person in the body, out of the body. He can talk with a person who's asleep. Your, because your spirit doesn't sleep and it never becomes unconscious. And uh, so the mind is the organ through which the spirit of God moves to touch this world. Now, uh, that's why in Solomon's dream, you see, God made his great transaction. Solomon made his great transaction with God while he was asleep. And that's why in the story of Helen Keller, she was both blind and deaf. And she, was, she had a difficult time uh, contacting this world until somebody came along with some tapping that she could finally make some kind. But she was never out of touch with God. She knew as much about God. And finally, when she discovered this tapping God, she said, oh, I know him, but I just didn't know his name. See, she already knew him. She had been in contact with the spiritual world. She was in contact with God. She already knew him, knew all about him and everything, although she had never heard it with her ears and never seen it with her eyes. Mrs. Bossert, you know, with this story of her, this dear uh, brethren lady who went to heaven and came back. She, when she got back, she saw so much that the real world was there where she went. That was the real world. That's not the floating cloud. That's the real world. And she got back, this was the temporary, and she saw it. it was, she, this world was so temporary, she was actually afraid to sit down in a chair. She thought it wouldn't hold her. She said, this is so temporary, everything. She was afraid almost to use it. And it took her a while to get adjusted to this, uh, this earth again. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. I want you to turn and look at that with me just a little bit. In this second chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul said, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. He did not come in the wisdom of men. 
that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Now, what is that wisdom? That's the wisdom that this mind of ours, this mind of ours, when Adam sinned and cut himself off from the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God did not, could not move through his spirit. Therefore, all the human mind can do is to contact this earth. That's all it knows. The human mind cannot. And so this wisdom here, look what he's talking about. How, albeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world. That's the, the mind, what the brill, most brilliant mind in the world, all it can come up with is the wisdom of this world. No, the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom. What is that hidden wisdom? That's the wisdom which the Spirit of God shows to our spirit and it comes out in our mind to grasp what the Spirit of God shows us. Which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love me. He's talking about something that your eye has never seen. And he's talking about something that your ear has never heard. But he says, but... God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. You see. So God contacts the spirit of man, teaches the spirit of man. When we come to God, have our sins forgiven, our spirit becomes alive. Then we begin to learn the things of the spirit of God. That way you can talk to the most brilliant man in the world. He doesn't know what you're talking about if he hasn't been born again. He's had no illumination. His spirit isn't illuminated. His spirit can't see anything. It's darkened. And uh, he, because here, this, this is the hidden wisdom. It's wisdom that no man could ever have searched out. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are feeling of God. The only way you can know the things of God is through his spirit, contacting our spirit. And that will enlighten then our minds. Our minds then become enlightened minds. Which things also we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, and for foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they're spiritually dirty. The natural man cannot know the things of the Spirit of God. Only God can reveal them to our spirits. That's the only way you can know anything about God, is through his Spirit contacting your spirit. That's the only way and you can possibly understand it. That's why you can talk to people about things of God and they don't know what you're talking about. It's perfectly natural and they won't until they really give their hearts to God and their spirit becomes alive and illuminated again. Then they begin to say, oh, I see what you're talking about. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things or discerneth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. He is no man. No man really, no man really understands the child of God. The man of the world can't understand him. They don't know what he's talking about. So, you and I, the real person, is our spiritual part of our being. As Paul said, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. So we see the wisdom is not of this world. The wisdom which God gives us is not of this world. It is a wisdom which comes entirely by being revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. And that's the wisdom which is eternal. That's the wisdom that will carry us into glory. That's the place that will carry us to this wonderful home we're singing about and talking about because the Holy Spirit will enlighten us and help us to get there. As it is written, it says, I have not seen nor ear heard. It's something that God will show us through his Spirit. So the mind cannot know anything of this hidden wisdom unless the Holy Spirit shows us. In Ephesians, the fourth chapter, I wanted to look at that just a little bit, the fourth chapter, the 17th and 18th verses. Paul said this, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 17th verse, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of the mind. That's the mind that has not been enlightened. 
having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. If the life of God isn't in us, then the human mind is a darkened mind. Through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. You see, if God is trying, that is the things of the Spirit can only be understood by our spirit. When we come to Jesus and that Spirit becomes alive, then that's the, only, that's the way we understand spiritual things. Is through the, the human mind can never grasp spiritual truths. The human mind can never grasp what God wants to tell us. But you and I, the real person about us is a spirit when we're made alive in Jesus Christ. That spirit becomes alive. And that's the spirit that will live on forever, out in eternity. You and I will be the same thing. You're not going to change. When I see Tim there, that's great. He's going to still be Tim. And we'll see and know each other. We'll be we're the same because the real person is me. This is the house I live in, but the real person will never change. I'll always be the same. The only change in my spirit is when I come to Jesus Christ and he begins to change my spirit and I change there in my spirit, then I become a changed person. That's the only way I can change. But I'm thank God Jesus can change us and that's marvelous, that's wonderful. The psychologist says uh, something like this, that he's speaking of the worldly point of view. He's talking about a young person, their characteristics and manner of living and expressions. And he said, the, the older you get, let's see, how did he put it? The longer you live, the more you become like yourself. So if you're kind of a nasty young person, you're not going to outgrow it. You're going to get more nasty. And if you're a kind of a person that gets jealous, as you get older, you're going to get more jealous. And if you, if you are cantankerous as a young person, you're going to get more so. This is psychology. They tell us that. You're going to get more so. The only way in the world you'll mellow and get sweeter is for the Holy Spirit to come in and give you a revelation of that nastiness. Rather, when he sees that, that is a revelation of hidden wisdom. It's something that the eye never saw. You, you didn't know you were so nasty until the Spirit... <laughs> I better put myself in on that too. We didn't know we were so... Excuse me for saying you. We didn't know we were so nasty uh, until... Because I didn't see it until the Holy Spirit revealed it. Then I say, oh, dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. I didn't know it was so bad. That was a revelation of hidden wisdom. It was the hidden wisdom that God reveals unto us our true condition, and we can bring it to God for cleansing. When we see something within us that needs to be cleansed, that's hidden wisdom that the mind can never discern. That's why when a person is, is hard to get along with, cantankerous in the home, it'll take the hidden wisdom of heaven to show the individual what they're like. They never see it. They don't know how bad they are, why the human mind can't comprehend it. It sees this, and only all the human mind knows is what it sees. But God's going to show you something that the eye has never seen. And that's how bad we were. I never saw how bad I was. I didn't know that. But the hidden wisdom of the Spirit of God let me see something my eye had never seen and my ear had never heard. But my eye now sees it. God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? His, His, and therefore, we can become changed people because, and if you ever become changed, it'll be because the Holy Spirit has given you a revelation of yourself and you've cried out unto God for mercy and He'll change that in you that you don't like. And if you see something in yourself you don't like, that's because the Spirit of God revealed it or you'd never see it. Otherwise, you can talk to some fellow people that are very nasty, and they don't know they're nasty. They don't know it. And, and if you try to tell them, they'll think you're all wrong. You, they'll say, brother, you don't understand me. Well, that's, the, <laughs> that's a good way out, isn't it? You don't understand me. You don't know where I am. No, I don't, but the Spirit of God does. He knows where we are. He knows what we're like. He knows what's in us. And then someday he'll put us in a situation and he'll give us a little bit of hidden wisdom. Fud right down us. Oh, Jesus, I didn't know I was that kind of a person. That's hidden wisdom. And the eye never saw it. The ear never heard it. But by his spirit, he revealed it unto us. 
Now he said, don't walk in the vanity of the mind. That's what the mind sees. And the mind will never see. It'll never see uh, how, how honoring. That's why I have no hope in the United Nations. They operate on the human mind. And it can never see the problems that the other country has. All they can see is what's on their own. And every country walks in there wanting to get something on their own. They see what's on the human level. That's all they can see. But the Christian is a man who sees hidden wisdom. He sees that and he cries out unto God. That's why when God can redeem us and change us and transform us and we walk into glory, we're going in transform people. That's why he says in Romans, the 12th chapter, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is that renewing? That's to let the Holy Spirit in it. That's a renewed mind is when the Holy Spirit illuminates it. Otherwise, we walk in the vanity of the mind, the mind that's been darkened by sin, been darkened, and therefore we never can see the things of the Spirit of God. But there are many things God wants to reveal to us, glorious things, wonderful things, things of the Spirit. He wants to reveal them to us by His Spirit. That's the only way in the world we see them. And I believe with all my heart, the more we surrender to Jesus, the more wonderful things he illuminates about the Spirit and glorious things he lets us see. He lets us see things of the Spirit, the beautiful church, the oneness of God's people, the holiness and righteousness of God. We begin to see all these things. They're hidden wisdom and only that which the Holy Spirit begins to reveal unto us. And, and when God shows us something, if we'll get it out of our hearts and get it out of our way, he'll show us a little more and we'll, our eyes will be opened a little more. And this person that's going out into eternity, this real you, is going to go out with eyes and ears to hear and to see the marvelous things of God because he has transformed us and changed us. See, God's in the business of transforming and changing his people. Wonderful, wonderful, glorious God. So I'm thankful Jesus wants us to walk in this hidden wisdom, wisdom of the Spirit. And uh, therefore, the real person within us can be alive and uh, rejoice and haven't we enjoyed this service tonight? All oh, this singing, the glories. I don't know. I was glad to see some others jumped up. I'd like to have jumped up with them. Why? We were sensing the Spirit, what He's doing for us. Our spirit was feasting and rejoicing. We were being fed in the Spirit. That's where it's so marvelous, and that's where we can enjoy ourselves. Praise God.